Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta. Our focus today is the opportunity for lab-grown diamonds. The Dubai Multi Commodity Center, which is home to more than 30 lab-grown diamond companies, feels that this segment will redefine the industry. A report by the DMCC has touted lab-grown diamonds as the fastest growing segment in the jewelry sector. It showed that the trade in these diamonds grew by more than a whopping 125% in Dubai during 2022. The report finds multiple use cases for lab-grown diamonds, which includes semiconductors, quantum computing and high-technology applications. We are now joined by Ahmed Sultan bin Salayam, who is Executive Chairman at the Dubai Multi Commodity Center, to get a better understanding of the potential for lab-grown diamonds and, of course, various commodities that DMCC does. Ahmed, hi, as always, thank you so much for joining us here. 2023 marks the year that DMCC is activating its diamond expertise to support global trade within the lab-grown diamonds. What is your sense? What is the number looking like for lab-growns right now? And what is the outlook? We've had a good year. Uh, you know, it grew up by uh, 126% in 2022, to, uh, and which is, uh, you know, to about $1.5 billion. Uh, the global uh, LGD retail <clears throat> sales value has reached $12.24 billion for 2022 as well. Um, the demand is there. Um, the, it used to be seen as a threat to 20 years ago. And some may feel that way today, but I feel it complements the jewelry industry. And uh, I think this is a trend that's going to keep going. It keeps the factory workers busy cutting diamonds. Uh, they have a standardized type of rough diamond that they cut. But it's also an important component for microchips, um, uh, space technology, your phone, your computer, your PlayStation, your games, your video ga electronic games and all that. because. It's, it, it works as some of the, I think it's the best semiconductor in the world. So I do feel that because there's a there's a tech demand on it or industry, kind of industrial demand on it, that the I don't think it will be facing the same challenges that uh, happened with the uh, Labron emeralds uh, historically. Mm. So, Ahmed, you're saying that on one side, it is a jewellery market that will benefit out of lab growns, and on the other side, it is the industrial demand that also going to be quite supportive. So, what's your sense on the growth and future projections that you see for this trade? I, I wish I knew. I can't predict the future. But I do believe that, uh, the, the, I mean, <clears throat> it, is, it is a good option in the U.S. as well. I mean, it's picked up. It used to be one, two percent. I think it's gone up above ten percent or more. Um, it's captured some a good chunk of the uh, bridal market. Um, you know, the one carat, two carat diamonds are facing kind of competition when it comes to lab grown diamonds. Not necessarily colored diamonds, though. Um, but we'll see how it goes. There are specific designs and cuts that you would never do with a natural diamond. I mean, cutting a diamond that looks like a, a cross or a star of David or the crescent or any other fancy design. And uh, you won't, you wouldn't get that with, uh, with natural diamonds. There are specific cuts that people go with, with natural diamonds. Otherwise they waste too much carrots. You, uh, the industry and the lab diamond industry can afford to, uh, to come, become fancy with the designs. The, uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, advices that I've heard during the lab grown diamond symposium is to treat lab grown diamonds as an art, not sell the paint, focus on the art. You could argue the same with gold and silver. I mean, you could, it, it's, uh, the silver is uh, utilized for the medical industry tools. And I, from what I read, um, antivirals or anti <clears throat> antibacterial, but on the gold side, it's used in, uh, and satellites, uh, the F1 racing car for, for, for the heat and all that. There is a demand for it. But when it comes to jewelry, it's specific designs. People don't wear gold bars on them. People are not going to wear loose stones on them. So uh, it's, it just needs to be handled uh, in a smart way. Um, and, you know, I've, I think Dubai Diamond Exchange, I believe, and DMCC were, were one of the first to welcome that brown diamonds. As long as they disclose, we don't have an issue with it. So uh, it's, it, I think also the, um, some of uh, the big players like the Diamond Foundry and others 
like being established in Dubai and, and, work, and operating out of Dubai because it is, as is the case with coffee, tea, gold, and natural diamonds, it is one of the best redistribution centers in the world. Ahmed, I also want to talk numbers as well. You told me in 2022 that it had been the most successful year on record for DMCC. How is 2023 looking like? So just to recap really quick, um, when we moved into Al Mas Tower in uh, 2008, we were barely over a thousand companies. Um, and rather than uh, uh, sitting on our hands watching what what needs to, just watching watching the news and getting uh, impacted by the by the media with doom and gloom mentality, we looked at the opportunities within the within this challenge, and we actually engaged with businesses in Antwerp, India, other parts of the world, U.S. And our well, part of our sales pitch is you should set up in DMCC today before the property prices do go up. Now, offices we've sold out in Al Mas Tower, but JLT and DMCC is growing. And when I was talking about property rates, I meant residential, where they can have their senior management work closer to the business today rather than wait when the prices are too high, which is the case today. You can't find space in Dubai and uh, things are growing. Even uh, Palm Jabal Ali has been reactivated. But um, back to your question, we were barely uh, over a thousand companies at that time. But from the global recession onwards, on average, we capture uh, year on year 2,000 companies. Now, 2020, which was arguably one of the toughest years uh, that the world has faced, we captured 2,200 companies. 2021, 2,485 companies. And last year alone, 3,049 uh, businesses. Beginning of the year, up until now, we have captured over 2,180 companies. I check this almost on a daily basis. <laughs> All right, those are big numbers. And as you said, since 2020, we've only seen these numbers grow. What's the total number count as of now? Over 23,000 businesses. Um, diamonds and jewelry, almost 3,000 companies. Gold, 1,500. Um, we have 12 AI companies, about 600 businesses in crypto and blockchain, representing about 60 to 70 percent of the G uh, GCC market in the crypto sector. But our leading sector actually is the energy, oil and gas and re renewable uh, sector, where we represent over 3,070 businesses including names that you would recognize like Reliance, Total, Aramco Trading. Um, there are, I, I, I picked up that there are a few companies linked to Glencore as well, um, Total, Trafigora, uh, Litasco, um, some of the best businesses who also have operations in Switzerland. So it, Dubai, Dubai and DMCC has, has turned into, I think, a modern Switzerland for the Middle East and North Africa. Well, all the big names there, but uh, apart from the traditional businesses, we do understand that you're also working on solar panels, geothermals. When we talk about energy and look at these ecosystems, how are you looking to house all of these renewables and the other energies within the system? Well, we've expanded, right? So we built one JLT, G plus 14. Each floor is about um, 20,000 square feet, I believe. Um, it's the columns are with the glass, so it's columnless floors. Um, we've had uh, one of the biggest uh, fertilizing companies that took space there. It's been uh, fully occupied for the past six years, uh, give or take. Um, we just moved into Uptown Tower, an 81-story 80 uh, height uh, building, and the offices have been rented out completely three, with three times the waiting list. The Gemological Institute of America has taken four floors, largest headquarter outside the U.S., for their laboratory, their campus, and I believe they will address also colored, dime, colored uh, stones and pearls as well. Now, to answer your question, our members are involved. I mean, we in the construction site of, uh, uh, of the Uptown District, we have solar panels on the, uh, on the car parks, and it turns out to be the largest one in a construction site globally. And that's one of our own DMCC member companies, not, not our, one of our own members, called Enerware. So, uh, you know, I engage with them. I just came from uh, Litasco's office, had a nice chat with them. It's exciting what's happening. It is. Uh, I would also want to understand on what is your vision with India going forward? What are the plans? And you've been in India a few times. What has fructified? 
I believe I've not been to Bangalore and I feel I missed out on the tech side and I want to visit Bangalore. Um, there is, there's a lot happening in India. It's just that I'm tied up with other travels, but my team are there. There was a SIPJO conference in Jaipur. Uh, to mention a few of the Indian companies, we, we, we moved out of Almas Tower. Valgari took one of the floors. KGK Diamonds took another floor as well, which is worth, I think, 2.1 or $2.2 billion globally. And 49 is a, is a, a micro business center. Um, for India, I think you'll see, you'll see, for me personally, I'll be looking at the water industry, maybe a little bit on the energy sector. Obviously, diamonds and gold, jewelry is important. Um, <clears throat> but I, I think I need to focus a little bit more on the tea side of the business, the coffee side as well. There is coffee production in India, maybe not as uh, famous uh, as the tea business, but uh, there's a lot of interest there. Um, there are future projects that I'm interested to look into. Um, I can't say if it's medium to long term, but you will you will see more work with the water center, attracting businesses that focus on the water industry, whether they're supplying, whether it's about sustainability, like the Dutch company Hydroloop, that uh, whose slogan is "Use your water twice." They focus on gyms, showers, hotels. So the water comes out of the shower, gets treated, goes back, and is used again rather than being wasted. Um, there's water monetization. I believe India will be involved in that one way or the other, whether it's a product from our side or their side or somewhere in the world. Um, and the idea behind that, once water is monetized and becomes like a major uh, commodity like soya bean, fuel oil, gold, once it has a value, you're going to see the same security you see around uh, oil fields, uh, diamond mines, and gold mines. Once that happens, I, you will see less pollution in reservoirs, less pollution in, in uh, rivers and other places. And maybe there'll be less need to de, uh, desalinate water from the sea. Although I, I always feel that desalinating the water might help lower, <laughs> lower the water uh, levels from going up. But uh, that's, a, that's for another discussion. I would, I would say health tech, health tech and fintech is, a, is, is an important aspect from India. I think, I think that's, that's not going to end anytime soon. I mean, if, uh, if, if the best people in Google, MasterCard are people from India, it, you know, it's more than just a call center. There's a lot of dependency on India. And today, I mean, uh, who would have thought India today produces all the iPhones? I think that's going to attract even more businesses. So I'm, I'm, I always keep an eye uh, uh, close on, on on the market changes in India and developments. And also I'm in touch with a lot of the Indian community. There's a wedding that I have to attend in Mumbai and uh, I can't get away from it. I only requested my friend to allow me to attend one day and travel back. I can't do the three days though. <laughs> All right. So a lot of plans with India and we do hope that you can make for that uh, Indian wedding that you just mentioned. Emma, there's always great informative conversation. Thank you so much for your time. And with that, we're heading into a short break. But coming up, we speak to Ajoy Chavla of Titan on their latest launches, jewelry trends, and more this festive season.